Chris, thanks for joining me here today to talk a little bit about Code Whisperer. Code Whisperer is AWS's uh, developer productivity tool using generative AI. Chris, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your role at Accenture. Thanks for having me here, Tom. Uh, so I'm Chris Scott. I'm part of Accenture, managing director, as you mentioned. I'm part of our Accenture AWS business group, which is our joint partnership that we founded back in 2015 to help customers accelerate their journeys to AWS. I serve as part of our lead architect for the AABG, that Accenture AWS business group. Would you share with me how Accenture looked at entering into using Code Whisper, and, and what, what was the main driver for it for you guys? Really passionate about Code Whisper and the future of Code Whisper, where the team is going. It's been a great tool for us so far. Um, and where we started uh, was really looking at how do we improve some of our internal asset development that we're doing. We have a joint program uh, that we announced at, Veloc at uh, reInvent last year called Velocity. And it's a platform to help with enablement, to reduce the time to build cloud foundations, data platforms, and as well develop cloud native applications. And we really wanted to reduce the undifferentiated heavy lifting that was involved in the setup and building applications. And uh, we found that um, Code Whisper was a great tool and companion for us in developing this internal platform that we developed together. So it's been really productive in, in helping our developers remove a lot of that you know, heavy lifting and give more time to higher value activities that they have because uh, developers are stretched so thin today. Uh, I find that many of our developers uh, have to combat with new responsibility around DevOps and new agile processes. They spend so much time working on these other things, they don't have enough time to code. So Code Whisper is a great companion to take away some of the extra work that they have on their plate to focus on those high value things. And one of those things that's extra work that maybe isn't extra work, something that we all need to be leaning in and doing, but certainly something that's important that Code Whisper can help around is, is with compliance. Really helping maintain not only a consistency, but achieving that compliance that you need to be able to deliver for your customers. Can you talk about the role that it's played in achieving that? Yeah, absolutely. Security and compliance is really important for us as we engage with many different clients around different industries. And the compliance rules around applications are constantly changing and what we need to do around industry regulations. So having a companion that allows us to be more repeatable and applying these different uh, policies, industry regulations really allows us to move faster. Code Whisper also provides code scanning and some security analysis as part of our, uh, our process now. So it, it really provides us more secure code that has a better quality and that is a big part of security and compliance. So we're really excited about continuing to use this. The other area uh, that uh, I'm very excited about is the uh, the custom model that was announced recently around Code Whisper. When I first heard of Code Whisper, I thought, wow, this is amazing. This is really going to help us. But what if we could have our own custom model yeah. so that I could solve some of the reusability challenge to really give our developers um, a, a library of function that they ha didn't have to go searching for, that the library basically provided the answer right away. And so- A library they'd actually use. Yeah, a library they actually use <laughs> and contribute back to <laughs> <laughs> automatically, thanks to Code Whisper. Uh, but the, the custom model really, I think, changes the game here because it allows you to introduce all of your organization's best practices, security uh, um, requirements, and as well kind of standard functions that you just repeat over and over time and time again across your different applications. So I think this is really a huge productivity increase that we'll see with the custom model because it will be tailored to each customer's organization. And that's an, another important element of security and compliance is to have standard patterns that we can rely on that our developers can pull very easily without extra work of having to search for the right block and the right uh, function in order to introduce that into their, the, the overall program they're building. So let's double click a little bit on the developer experience. What, yeah. What's the developer's experience? What's it like for them using Code Whisper? What do they do? They sit down at their computer and what happens next? 
Yeah, so Code Whisper is so easy to get started. It, it you know, build on just a per user basis. Uh, it's really easy to get going. And, and how you start with Code Whisper is really getting in the console, setting things up, and uh, you integrate it directly into your IDE, one of your preferred development environments. And Code Whisper supports a bunch of different languages that are out there, constantly adding more languages uh, to the mix as well. Uh, but for the developer experience, once it's set up in their IDE and they've added it as a plugin, really the, the, the magic happens by developers training Code Whisper around certain comments, introducing a comment to the code about what you want Directly to into the code. Directly into the code, exactly. And basically just like tab auto completion, Code Whisper will recommend blocks or entire functions in order to complete uh, what's going on. So it analyzes what you've already written and provides a great recommendation to move forward. And the developer can choose to utilize that recommendation or not, or get another recommendation. Instead so of them going online and downloading code that it, may or may not be secure, may or may not have a good end user exactly. license agreement, yeah. it's our predetermined and, and ready to go. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we worry about too around IP is uh, if one of our programmers uh, goes out there, developers, and uh, sees open source code, we don't want to inject that. So it provides them a reusable path of least resistance so that they use Code Whisper and we encourage them to use the right thing. And with the custom models, we can also use predefined functions that we've written time and time again and introduce that into the code. That's a, a, one of the areas that I am super excited. The potential here around Code Whisper is I can tackle reusability in a different way that we've had to before. For developers, it's easy. We can create a wiki and other stuff, but you can't necessarily put that into your workflow all the time. It's, let's go out, let's surf this wiki, let's pull in the right pieces of code. And then developers are expected to re-contribute to yeah. either a wiki or a code base that's a standard library. With Code Whisper now, it learns constantly from what our developers are doing with a model that we've trained it on. And we can continue to develop that model. So for us, it's really tackling that age-old problem of how do we become more reusable and how do we get people to re-contribute back to that standard model? You know, I love that path of least resistance. We talk to customers a lot about, you know, govern by enabling them. Don't govern by restricting. Make it easy for them to do the right thing, and, and they will. And it being just integrated right directly into the IDE, directly into the code that they're working on is, is fantastic. So what's been the developer's reaction to this? How have they, you know, do, do they like it? Have they been concerned about what it means for them? What's, what's been their feeling and reaction? I, I think it's overly been incredibly positive because it gives them a little bit more time to focus on the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about, removing some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting is really important for them. You know, obviously in the back of everyone's mind, folks are concerned about how does my role change? What do I do differently? Friend. We've really seen Code Whisper as a paired programming angel on your shoulder to help you uh, be more productive. So, so really, we've seen our developers excited about the path forward. The, the important point that we've also seen is for Code Whisper, it's important to make sure that our developers build it into their workflow and they get comfortable using it day to day. It's not just something that you use occasionally, it should be something that you use as part of your continuous workflow and what you're doing. So when we've enabled developers focusing on that and changing their workflow has been one of the most, uh, most impactful keys to success. So let's talk a little bit about results. What kind of results are you seeing with your teams around productivity, around you know, being able to achieve better outcomes? What kind of uh, benefits? They've really jumped in and found a lot of benefit from using Code Whisper, both removing the undifferentiated heavy lifting of code development, but also to help them think more strategically because they have the time to, to really focus on building more robust applications and that they can also rely on Code Whisper to provide the security scanning, open source scanning, and the other functions. And frankly, we've seen a great developer productivity increase as well. We've seen up to 30%. Uh, improvement in productivity. And uh, we think that that is just the beginning of what we can do with more um, formalized training programs and capabilities that we can put around enabling this into an overall development workflow, uh, workflow and adopt it across the enterprise. 
let's talk about how you calculated the productivity. So how, how did we get to that point? Everyone's dying to get that great metric to go share with their board and their C-suite. How did you guys calculate that productivity measurement? Uh, so for now, we used a couple different measures. It's by lines of code that uh, developer has contributed before and after Code Whisper. And we've also looked at the number of uh, stories that have been completed by each developer before and after Code Whisper. Right now, we're working on developing more automated tools to be able to capture that developer productivity. I think many developers don't necessarily want folks hyper-focused on their productivity. That feels like kind of a, a constant evaluation. So I think that's something that we're going to have to work through is making sure that our developers are comfortable with measuring their productivity, not as a, a question about what they're doing, but of the effectiveness of the tools that we're providing them. Yeah, and lines of code is certainly one measurement for whether or not it's effective. How about just uh, the results that they're getting? Are there is the code that they're writing more effective and in, in achieving the outcomes? You guys have any measurements or thoughts around that? Yeah, absolutely. Great point. It, it, it's it's about code quality and uh, security, and um, having greater confidence. And what we talked about before with IP and the introduction, accidentally of open source code. With Code Whisper, we can trust the results that we get out of our developers kind of right off the bat. So it's reduced the amount of time that we've had to do in code scanning, and it's also improved the quality of the code that we've seen from our developers. So we've gotten a lot of those intangible uh, results along with some of the metrics that we've collected with that 30% improvement. So what are next steps here? You, the roll, first rollouts have gone well. You're getting the benefits. What are you guys doing as a next step to continue to drive adoption and usage within Accenture? Yeah, we've used Code Whisper in a number of different internal programs that we're developing. We're really excited to offer Code Whisper in the future to many users within Accenture that are developing within AWS and really bringing this to scale for our development communities. Uh, I also see within the entire ecosystem, so many of our enterprise clients are really interested in Code Whisper, and we have many clients that we're talking to about enabling thousands of developers, really at scale. We're moving past a lot of kind of the pilot phase with a lot of our customers experimenting with AI. How do they build it into their processes, uh, their business applications? And I think we're taking kind of a similar path as everyone's experimenting now, but now we're really hitting scale where customers are thinking about how do I enable this for my large community of developers to get the maximum benefit. Yeah, and one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of people, it's it's a good way to start practicing and learning with generative AI, to start dipping your toe in and into, well, maybe, uh, you know, make your board happy that you're doing a generative AI project, but it's a great way for people to start to learn and go, okay, if I can do this in my development environment, how could I do this maybe to help with customer service or maybe to help in, in another area? Are you seeing some of that as well in, in with Accenture or with your customers? Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone's really focused on how are we improving productivity of our developers, productivity of our application teams, productivity of our, our functional folks and those folks that are out interacting with customers, uh, you know, our end clients' customers. And everyone's really focused on that, uh, that productivity element and how AI is going to change things. Uh, so, you know, Code Whisper is a very natural, easy way to get in to show the benefit that AI can bring for some internal workloads that may not necessarily be uh, as complicated to introduce AI into large business applications as well. So what best practices do you have for people as they're now considering, they've listened to this, they want their productivity benefit, they want to be able to get into this, what what are those few best practices to get started you'd suggest for people? Training, I think, is really important. You know, Code Whisper is so easy to set up and get started, but it's really about how do you make it most productive for your development community, and how do you build it in, as I said before, into their workflow, make it part of their normal day-to-day -day process. And without the proper training, we see that it's harder for developers to catch on. So if you train folks up, you get them enabled within Code Whisper, you really bake it into what they're doing, we see it being a very successful tool that developers use for the long term. Yeah, I love that. You know, one thing that I'd add to that is we talk a lot to customers about the frozen middle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, the senior leaders are bought in. They're looking to drive change. Your most junior people, one-year, ten-year, two-year people, they're, they're people who are, 
you know, they're open for new things. It's that group in the middle that are, well, they're concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to know what's in it for them. They might want to understand what's in it for their company, but they want to know what they're going to go home and tell their spouse about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so they want to understand this is good. This is good productivity benefit for me. This will be good for developing our career and, and, and really advancing forward. You know, for me, I look at stuff like this, and as a former CIO, it's been a long time since I saw something that really made me step back and go, wow. Yeah. You know, this is truly transformative capability, something that, you know, if you can get a 20%, a 30% productivity out of your team, it just blows my mind on this. Why wouldn't you do this? You would absolutely exactly. rush in to do this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think of this kind of like maybe this is a trifecta of change that's uh, really come out there for developers. First, you know, it, we had agile thinking. And that really changed how we fundamentally think about development in the role of developers, making them more embedded in the overall definition of the application, the functional purpose of the application, giving them a greater visibility. And then we had DevOps, which also extended yeah. their role to do yeah. more operational yeah. capability. I think this is going to be that third one where AI has become a embedded part of our developers' workflow to make them more productive and remove a lot of that undifferentiated heavy lifting. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your advice. You've given us good practical advice on how to get started. Any closing thoughts for people here today as they look to adopt Code Whisper? Focus on training and enablement. I think that that's really the important part because uh, as you asked me before, how have developers responded? Introducing Code Whisper in the right way, giving developers the right tools and understand how Code Whisper works helps developers develop the right prompts to utilize Code Whisper, write the uh, appropriate comments to really get the greatest value out of it. So when you're looking at Code Whisper, it's so easy to get started, but make sure you put the right training and enablement in place for your development community. Thank you for sharing your insights today. I'm really excited to maybe get together with you in the future and learn where you've been able to take Code Whisper within Accenture and some of the benefits that you're seeing. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much, Tom.